So just a quick recap on buffers. So their purpose is to resist changes in pH when we add in small amounts of acids or alkalis. We're going to have a look at a couple of examples here. The first one being ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. So a, salt, a buffer always consists of a weak acid, such as ethanoic acid, and the salt of the weak acid. So the salt, a salt of ethanoic acid is sodium ethanoate. And we see those two things in these next equations. So with the weak acid, we see that it only partially dissociates into its ions, producing some ethanoate ions and some hydrogen ions. But most of it remains undissociated. So we call it a large reservoir of undissociated ethanoic acid. The salt of the weak acid, and that should be a little small three, is sodium ethanoate will fully dissociate in solution to give its ions, ethanoate ions and sodium ions. So we have some ethanoate ions from the, the dissociated ethanoic acid, but most of them come from the, the sodium ethanoate. So the purpose of these buffers, as we said, is to resist changes in pH when we add a small amount of acid or a small amount of alkali. The first explanation tells us what happens when we add a small amount of acid. So when we add a small amount of acids, we're increasing the concentration of our H plus ions. So looking at these two equations, I have to decide how am I going to remove those extra hydrogen ions? Because ultimately our pH depends on the concentration of hydrogen ions. So if I increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, I want to try and move to get rid of those. And so what happens in this case is either this equilibrium, this first equilibrium, can shift to the left to produce more eth undissociated ethanoic acid to remove it. But what's more effective is the, is, um, the hydrogen ions reacting with the ethanoate ions to give us our ethanoic acid again, which is essentially the same thing as what's happening here in the equilibrium shifting to the left because we're producing more of our ethanoic acid. But just as we said earlier, more of these ethanoate ions come from the, um, from the salt. And your explanation always ends in this sentence. This maintains the concentration of hydrogen ions because the extra, con the extra hydrogen ions have been removed. And so the pH is maintained also. So we're thinking, what are we adding in? We're increasing our concentration of hydrogen ions. And so how are we going to get rid of them? Well, they react with the ethanoate ions to produce more ethanoic acid. Um, that means the extra hydrogen ions are removed. That maintains the pH um, by maintaining the concentration of hydrogen ion. Since we know by this equation up here that the pH depends on the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So if we rub all that out, and what happens, think about what happens if we add in some extra alkali. So if we're adding in some extra alkali, what does alkali do? How is that going to affect the pH? Well, we can see that there's no hydroxide ions in either of these equations. But what happens is when the hydroxide ions come in, they're going to react with this hydrogen ion here. So we'll have our hydroxide ion reacting with the hydrogen ions to produce water. What does that mean for the concentration of hydrogen ions? Well, it means that these hydrogen ions here that have been produced by the dissociation of our ethanoic acid, it means our concentration is going to drop because they are being used up. So I'm getting rid of some of them. And so what happens is the first equation, the equilibrium can shift to the right to replace some of these hydrogen ions that have been um, used up by the hydroxide ions. So in your explanation of that, you need to include this equation. You need to say that the hydroxide ions react with the hydrogen ions from the um, dissociated acid. And that removes hydrogen ions from the system or it decreases the concentration. And so therefore, some of this large reservoir of undissociated ethanoic acid can dissociate itself. In other words, moving the equilibrium to the right. That's going to maintain your concentration of hydrogen ions. 
And if your concentration of your hydrogen ions is maintained, then so is your pH according to this equation. And that all is explained on at the top of the next page for the addition of alkali on this ethanoic acid and sodium methanoate system. So we then looked at another example of the carbonate hydrogen carbonate buffer system. Carbonate is CO3, 2 minus, and hydrogen carbonate is HCO3, minus. And when you're asked to explain how a buffer works, its mode of action, you're often asked it um, in a four mark question. Within that four mark question, you need to include equations. So the first thing you need is an equation for a ver reversible reaction which involves hydrogen ions. So what we see with this is with the carbonate and hydrogen carbonate, we can write an equation that links the two of these and also involves hydrogen ions. And that is this equation here. So our hydrogen carbonate dissociating to give us carbonate ions and hydrogen ions. The reason that we have our aqueous state symbol is because buffers are always solutions. So these ions are in solutions. So then you need to explain what happens if you add a little bit of acid or a small amount of alkali either. So when you add in a little bit of acid, you're essentially adding in hydrogen ions because all acids contain hydrogen ions. That means we're increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions here. So what does the equilibrium want to do to remove those hydrogen ions? Well, it shifts to the left in order to remove the extra hydrogen ions and maintain the equilibrium. That's going to maintain the concentration of hydrogen ions. And as we said before, it maintains the pH according to this equation. So it's fairly easy to see for um, when we add a small amount of acid in. For um, when we add a small amount of alkali in, it's a little bit more difficult and we need to add an extra equation for this. But what happens, just as we discussed before, are the hydroxide ions come in and they react with our hydrogen ions. And that has the effect of essentially removing those hydrogen ions from the system because they're being used up. Therefore, their concentration is going to drop, which would affect the pH. But what a reversible equation can do is more hydrogen, ion, hydrogen carbonate ions can dissociate effectively um, the equilibrium shifting to the right. That's going to cause the hydrogen carbonate ions to dissociate into more carbonate ions, more hydrogen ions, therefore maintaining the concentration of hydrogen ions, therefore maintaining the pH. So it's really important that you're able to both uh, write these equations and also in words explain what happens. And this equation will always be important for um, explaining what happens when a small amount of alkali is added. And that's explained over on the next page, on page 59. However, there is an alternative answer to the um, explanation of why, of what happens when a small amount of hydroxide ions are added, a small amount of alkali is added, essentially adding um, some hydroxide ions. So the first explanation is the one we've just discussed. But there is another explanation. And the reason we want to discuss this now is quite often this is actually what you see on the mark scheme. But either answer are acceptable. And I think the first explanation is easier. But just to explain what you might see on the um, mark scheme, it might be something similar to this. So let's just remember our reversible equation that linked our hydrogen carbonate and our carbonate ions by the dissociation of the hydrogen carbonate ion. Okay, and what um, another alternative explanation is that when we add in extra hydroxide ions, they actually react with this hydrogen carbonate ion. They can react with the hydrogen carbonate ion and that produces more carbonate ions and water. If we think about our previous explanation, we said what happened was the hydroxide ions came in, they reacted with the hydrogen ions from 
the right hand side of our equilibrium and they produced water. So you can see very easily that both explanations produce more water. The, the, one, the equation in black being our first explanation, the equation in blue being our second explanation. But what's not quite as easy to see is why both solutions actually produce more carbonate ions as well. But what we said in the first explanation was that the hydroxide ions come along and they remove some of the re they react with some of the hydrogen ions, essentially removing them from the system. And so what the equilibrium does is shifts to the right to replace those hydrogen ions. So not only does it produce more hydrogen ions by doing this, obviously when it shifts to the right hand side, it produces more carbonate ions. So both explanations say exactly the same thing. They say that you're producing more carbonate ions and you're producing water as a result of this. So either explanation are fine because essentially they're saying the same thing. Then you need to know briefly how to prepare buffers. And the best way to do that is by reacting an excess of the weak acid with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide. And we'll have a look at a second what that does. Or you can mix a solution of the acid with the solid salt or you can mix um, the acid with a solution of the salt. So there's three ways there, but this first way is the best way. And so what we're doing um, is it needs to be an excess of the weak acid. So have a look here at the example of ethanoic acid. We've got an excess of ethanoic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us sodium ethanoate. That's the salt of our weak acid plus some water. And the fact that we're producing water it doesn't make a difference because it's all in solution anyway. So what does it mean by reacting it with an excess of weak acid? Well, if we think about this equation quantitatively, we've got our ethanoic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio to give us one mole of our sodium ethanoate plus water. So if we put in some imaginary values here, say we had, we use 10 moles of acid, 5 moles of alkali. Well, we can see because it's a one-to-one -one ratio that obviously our sodium hydroxide is the limiting reagent or the limiting reactant. And so our ethanoic acid is in excess. So the number of moles of my salt that's produced is going to be determined by the sodium hydroxide because it's the limiting reactant. So initially we have no salt and we have no water. So if you think of that as our initial. Because sodium hydroxide is the limiting reactant, it determines how much reacts and all of the sodium hydroxide is going to be able to react. So we're going to lose 5 moles of our sodium hydroxide. If I bring that over, bring my reacting moles over, this is a 1 to 1 ratio, so I'm going to produce 5 moles of my sodium ethanoate and I'm going to produce 5 moles of my water and also because it's a one to one ratio I'm going to use up five moles of my ethanoic acid. That's going to leave me with a final number of moles of 10 minus 5 moles of ethanoic acid so 5 moles of ethanoic acid, 5 moles minus 5 moles of sodium hydroxide so it's going to leave me with nothing and 5 moles of sodium ethanoate and 5 moles of water. So what does my final buffer solution contain? Well, it contains 5 moles of ethanoic acid. It contains 5 moles of sodium ethanoate, the salt of my weak acid, and it contains 5 moles of water, which again, as we said, doesn't matter because Buffers are always a solution, so they're obviously going to contain some water. So this is the best way of producing a buffer.
um, react an excess of the weak acid with a strong base, that will give you um, your salt of your weak acid. That reaction will produce the salt of the weak acid. But also because you've used the ethanoic acid in excess, it means there's going to be some left over in the solution. And so there you have your buffer solution made. Because buffers are always a weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. So the important questions for buffers are being able to explain how a particular buffer system works. But also you may be asked to do some pH calculations for a buffer. And that's what we'll look at next. So um, for this example, we have got ethanoic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. What are we going to get? What is my salt going to be? Well, what is that called? Tell me. Sodium ethanoate. If there was a potassium at the end, it would be potassium ethanoate. Is it ethanoate or ethanoate? I mean, I say ethanoate. Probably ethanoate. Probably ethanoate. Yeah, probably. Okay, so my first step is I want to determine the number of moles um, of the acid and the number of moles of the hydroxide, which is actually not really step one, but... Um, Anyway, we need to do that. So you're simply doing N equals CV for your ethanoic acid and for your sodium hydroxide. Okay. So for my ethanoic acid, I've been told that the concentration is 0 0.4 and the volume is 50 centimeters cubed, which is 0 0.05 decimeters cubed. So that gives me a number of moles of um, ethanoic acid as 0 0.02. Okay, so that's how much the number of moles of acid that I've added in. Now I need to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide that I've added in. So again, I do N equals CV for it. Okay, this time the concentration of my sodium hydroxide is 0 0.2. And the, concentr or the volume is... 50 centimetres cubed, which is 0 0.05 decimetres cubed. That works out as 0 0.01 moles. Okay, so just as we were talking about previously, you can see that the sodium hydroxide is your limiting reactant, and that's what we want. We want it to be the limiting reactant. And we want the acid to be in excess. Okay? So this is going to, the limiting reactant essentially determines your reacting moles if we think about it in terms of our normal equilibrium calculation. So this is essentially our initial moles. Okay, so how many moles of my salt and water will I have initially? Zero. Zero. So if you add a zero in there and a zero in there. Okay, what are my reacting moles of sodium hydroxide going to be? No. Yeah. Okay, so all of the sodium hydroxide reacts because it's the limiting reactant, but not all of the ethanoic acid is going to react. So all of my sodium hydroxide reacts. I'm going to add the moles in. Okay, so I can work out then the reacting moles of all of the other reactants and products. So your ratio is 1 to 1 for them all. So that means I'm also going to lose 0 0.01 moles of my ethanoic acid. And I'm going to produce 0 0.01 moles of my sodium ethanoate. It's also 1 to 1, so I'm going to produce 0 0.01 moles of my water. Okay. Okay, so your final moles are, or your equilibrium moles, whatever you want to, well, final moles is probably more appropriate here. Okay, how many moles am I going to be left with of ethanoic acid? None. <laughs> Not one. Um, I'm going to be left with no sodium hydroxide. 
0.01 of my sodium methanoate and 0.01 of my water. Okay, now, the issue with this is that um, that is the number of moles. In order to put it into a Ka expression, which is where we're going to get eventually, what do I need it to be in? Not moles, but concentration. Okay, so I need to work out the concentration <laughs> of my acid and also of my salt. What is the equation for concentration? <coughs> N over V. How am I going to work out my volume? How am I going to work out my volume? Pardon? Just says Good. Add fifteen fifty. That's going to be the total volume of my system. So total volume is fifty plus fifty, which is a hundred centimeters cubed. Okay, so now I want to work out the concentration of my acid. So it's N over V. The number of moles of my acid was 0 0.01. The volume was 100 centimetres cubed, which is 0 0.1 decimetres cubed. So the concentration of my acid is 0 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed. Okay, then I want to work out the concentration of my salt. Because it's 100 centimetres cubed, which is 0 0.1 decimetre cubed. Okay, and again, the number of moles of my salt is 0 0.01. And the volumes, sorry, 0 0.1. And so the concentration of your salt is also 0 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed. Okay, there's two ways of doing this next part. Um, so if you do one kind of to the left and one to the right, and then we'll kind of separate them down the middle. Okay, so the first way is thinking um, of what's going to happen to my acid. Okay, so in the buffer system. Um, it's your base full already. A bit more, like. <laughs> so we need to think about what's happening to my acid in the buffer system. So remember, the role of the acid is to dissociate and give us our ethanoid ions and our hydrogen ions. Because ultimately, what are we trying to work out here? The pH. So in order to work out the pH, we have to find out the H plus concentration of H plus. Okay, so um, I now know the concentration of my um, ethanoic acid and also the concentration of this ethanoate ion or ethanoate ion is equal to the concentration of your um, salt up here. So this 0 0.01 is also equal to the concentration of your salt. Okay, so if I write my expression for Ka... Ka is the concentration of my ethanoid ions times the concentration of hydrogen ions over the concentration of ethanoic acid. Okay, so I can substitute what, in, what I know. So the question tells me that Ka is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. I've worked out that the concentration of my ethanoid ions, which is equal to the concentration of the salt, is 0.1. I'm trying to work out the concentration of my hydrogen ions. And I know that the concentration of my ethanoic acid is 0 0.1. What's going to happen to my 0 0.1s? They can cancel out. So essentially, the concentration of my hydrogen ions is equal to 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. The other way of doing it, if you don't want to think about that equation, um, etc., that's going to work all the way. Um, you can learn an equation um, to use an... No. You can use an equation that, um, for buffer systems, but it involves you remembering this equation and it involves you getting it the right way around. But if you want to do it, 
this um, equation is that the concentration of a hydrogen ions is equal to Ka times the concentration of your acid over the concentration of your salt. It just requires you remembering that it's acid over salt rather than salt over acid because then you're going to get it wrong. Um, I, this is the, the right hand side is the way I would have done it um, if you just learned that equation. But it's up to you. So anyway. So H plus is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. That's your Ka. Times by the concentration of your acid, which is 0 0.1. Over the concentration of your salt, which is also 0 0.1. What happens to my 0 0.1s? They cancel. So your H plus is just equal to 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. The advantage is it involves you, doesn't involve you rearranging an equation and so on. Yeah, exactly. Because what we're saying is what we said was that this one here is equal to the concentration of the salt. So yeah, it's just the rearrangement of that equation. But it just involves you remembering that equation, whereas that's just a Ka expression which you could write yourself. Okay, now I've got my concentration of my hydrogen ions. Last step is working out your pH, which is just simply taking the negative log of the concentration of your hydrogen ions, which works out as 4.8. Isn't that fun? Okay, so in this example, it's exactly the same thing, only that we have propanoic acid. reacting with sodium hydroxide instead of ethanoic acid. So what's um, my salt going to be? Good, sodium propanoate. Um, okay, so the first thing I need to do is work out how many moles of the acid and the sodium hydroxide that I've added in. So just do N equals CV for both of those. The concentration of your propanoic acid is 0 0.1 and the volume of your propanoic acid is 30 centimetres cubed, which is 0 0.03. That gives you the number of moles of propanoic acid is 0 0.003. Okay, then for sodium hydroxide, you're, when you're calculating how many moles of sodium hydroxide that you added in, the concentration is 0 0.1 and the volume is 15 centimetres cubed, which is 0 0.015 decimetres cubed. That gives you a number of moles of 0 0.015 moles. So again, we can see that this is the limiting reactant. And so that determines our reacting moles. Okay, um, just so we know at this point, um, it's always going to be for a monobasic acid. So it's all that's monobasic acid is one that produces one mole of hydrogen ions in solution. Um, so rather than like sulfuric acid producing two moles, it's a dibasic acid. Yeah. Um, if you had, basically that means that our balancing numbers here are one to one. But if your balancing numbers were not at this stage, you would need to divide by your um, ratio. Mm -hmm. But you'd be doing that with your um, reacting moles anyway, so don't worry about too much about that. Okay. Um, so what we've just worked out is essentially our initial moles. And that's obviously going to be zero of our products. Then our reacting moles. All of our sodium hydroxide is going to react. So that means I'm going to lose 0 0.0015 moles of my sodium hydroxide. And then again, your ratio is all one to one. OK, 
Okay, and then final moles is just initial plus your reacting. So I'm left with 0.015 moles of my propanoic acid. I'm left with no sodium hydroxide. And I'm left, I produce 0.015 moles of my sodium propanoate and 0.0015 moles of my water. Okay, next step in order to be able to put it into my equation for Ka or the buffer equation, whichever you want to use, we need to work out the concentration of our acid and the concentration of our salt. So the, in order to do that, we're going to need to divide by the total volume, which in this case is 45, because I've got 15 of my sodium hydroxide and 30 of my propanoic acid. That gives me 45. So the concentration of your propanoic acid is N over V, which is 0 0.0015 divided by 0 0.045, because that's um, 45 centimetres cubed and we need to convert it into decimeters cubed. That works out as 0 0.0333 um, recurring moles per decimeter cubed. And then the concentration of my salt also work out by doing the number of moles over volume. And again, we're going to say that this is the same thing because the number of moles is also 0 0.0015 and the total volume is obviously the same at 0 0.045. Okay. So at this stage, it's um, your choice which way you do it. So that is also equal to the concentration of the anion of it. Because that, the reason that that is, is because, as we said earlier, this fully dissociates in water. So that's the reason why I can take that equal to the concentration. Because otherwise you would think I was just saying, oh, I'm just going to say that's equal to the anion I know. for the crack. Because I need to put it into my expression for Ka. Okay. If you do it the first way. Okay, so propanoic acid dissociates to give me. Sorry, that's not right. That's ethanoate. The propanoate anion plus my hydrogen ions. So therefore, Ka is equal to the concentration of the propanoate ions times by the concentration of my hydrogen ions over the concentration of propanoic acid. Okay, the question tells me that Ka is 1.22 times 10 to the minus five. I worked out in the previous part of the question that the concentration of my propanoate ion is 0 0.0333 times by the concentration of my hydrogen ions, which is what I want to find out, over the concentration of my acid, which I also worked out was 0 0.0333. What's going to happen to the 0 0.333s? They cancel out. You can rearrange the equation and bring it to the, over to the other side and whatever, but there's no point in doing that. So that means the concentration of your hydrogen ions is just equal to Ka, which is 1.22 times 10 to the minus 5. Just so you know, they don't always cancel out. In the next example, you'll see how they don't cancel out. So it's not like you can just always take the concentration of hydrogen ions to be equal to Ka. Otherwise, there would have been no point doing any of this. Okay, other option is use your buffer equation, which is Ka equals acid over salt. Okay, um, your Ka value is 1.22 times 10 to the minus 5 times by the concentration of your acid, which is 0 
over the concentration of your salt, which is 0 0.0333. Those cancel out. So therefore, your concentration of hydrogen ions is just equal to 1.22 times 10 to the minus 5. Last stage. What ultimately am I trying to work out? The pH of the buffer. So pH equals minus log of the concentration of my hydrogen ions, which is the minus log of 1.22 times 10 to the minus 5, which is 4.91.